The transition I want to share with you today happened to me about, oh, about 10 to 12 years after I, I graduated from college. I had graduated with, from college with a degree in biochemistry. I had loved science. I fell in love with the ability of science to describe and explain the world. I loved the fact that it was so specific. I even loved actually being in the lab. I was a lab rat. I would spend a lot of time working in the lab and I'd throw myself into the literature. It didn't happen overnight and it didn't happen right away. I ended up starting to feel like maybe science was too small for me. I ended up starting to realize that the conversations I was having at the luncheon table with my colleagues were on very small territory. It was, ended up being too specific. I ended up feeling like my life was dedicated to one amino acid in one molecule. And it was a great molecule. I mean, I, it was an important molecule. It was a molecule implicated in uh, autoimmune disorders. But when I realized that what I was surrounding myself with during my day wasn't large enough to feed me, then I realized that um, it was time for me to begin to do something else. Now, the reason why I share this story with you is not because I think it's unique. In fact, I think it's fairly mundane. And I think it's growing. I think it's becoming more and more the story that each of you will have. We've all heard the, what people have told us about you'll be changing careers X num your, your career X number of times during your life. And even though there's lots of debate about how many times that actually is, and it's actually very, very difficult to get numbers, on that figure, we can actually come up with some uh, sets of uh, conclusions, lessons that come out of that debate. The first one is, is that I'm especially slow. <laughs> 10 years is often a very long time to wait after college before you make your transition. Most people will be making their transition a few years after college, and some of us much, much later. Right? We all have our own personal timelines. But the idea here is, is that the closer you are after your graduation, the more likely it is that you'll be facing your transitional moment. Now, the second one that ends up coming out of this is that uh, even if you don't change your career, right, if there is no radical different path that you end up choosing, you're going to need a different skill set towards the middle and the end of your career than what you began with. We are trained to specialize very early to get a certain set of specific skills, and then we are taught that we need to put those out into the job market so we can secure a job. Well, the problem is the jobs you use, the skills you use to secure the job initially may not be the skills that will help you advance later on. The increasing change, the, the rapidity of change of technology, and with the fact that the better you get, the more people you'll have to communicate to, and the more responsibilities you'll end up having, end up meaning that the, those, your skills you're going to be using at that particular time are not skills that you specifically majored in. So what I would like to do is, um, I would like to actually get us to start thinking about what it means to be on a career path. And what does a career path, uh, and maybe to start even thinking about what does it mean to actually change the image of a career path into something else, something more fruitful. The, um, one of the things that does come out of this that we can actually fair, uh, say fairly well is that your ability to be able to make a transition later in life will depend on the solid core of your education while you're at the university. Now this means not only having the, the depth 
of being able to major in a specific thing. It also means having the breadth to be able to have a diversified skill set and, and uh, be able to actually see how your major, what you majored in, fits into the rest of the world. And what I really want to do today is I want to convince you that the idea, the very image that we have of the career path is insufficient. Um, you're told to track very early in your lives and you're told that any deviation, often, from this path can be a failure. For me, I, you, you should be there. You should have been there when I was trying to tell my mother that I was going to give up a fairly lucrative career in the sciences to study history. She turned around and said, what do you want to do that for? This is no matter the fact that I got a full ride to Stanford. She it just couldn't get into her mind. She couldn't wrap around the idea, why would this person want to become a historian? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to say that um, this idea of the career path isn't doing us any good. It's not sufficient for you. And as, as we've had heard testament to numerous times today from different people in different parts of their lives, it's not adequate to explain the complexity of the types of experiences that you're gonna be having. It's not even adequate to explain the, the types of experiences that our society will want us to eventually have. As we end up uh, in this complex society, as we end up uh, with science and technology touching more and more aspects of our lives, we're going to be able, we're going to need hybrid people. People who are gonna be able to study a little bit of science and a little bit of the humanities. Right? And in my major, the one that I'm the chair of, the Comparative History of Ideas, we have numerous uh, individuals like this, people who have gone through transitions. We have people who have studied the sciences, who've come back and uh, want to learn about literature. We have people who have spent their life thinking about Italian studies and Italian culture, who all of a sudden become convinced that they want to go to medical school. How do we accommodate this? Right? We're not doing, we're, how do we respect this in other people? These people are the lifeblood for the future. These people are the connective tissue that's going to hold together the soul, the head, and the heart of our future society. So what I'd like to argue for is that we actually drop this idea of the career path. I want us to say uh, it's not just the career path that what I want us to think about pursuing is I want you to have a career landscape. Right? The difference here is that a landscape is composed of many different paths. The difference here is also the fact that a landscape doesn't recognize that the path is the only way to access that landscape. In a, in a, if you're taking a hike, for instance, you may be hiking up the ridge and all of a sudden decide, wait a second, I need to go down into the river to see the types of vistas and sceneries that the river might supply. Now, it does not mean that pathways aren't important. I am not up here to argue, against, to, to, to argue against specialization or even against having a major. What I am here to argue, and the point I want to make very forcefully to you, is the switch from having a career path to having a career landscape gives you one important thing, and that is built into the image itself. That thing is perspective. If you lose perspective, you confuse your path with who you are. By gaining perspective, you have the ability to change paths. You know that at a certain time in your life, it's time for you to do something different. It's time for you to head to the river. It's time for you to give up science in order to see how science fits in society. Now, this brings me to the last thing that I'd like to communicate to you. And this is, I, I think, a lesson that we'll hear reiterated over and over again from the rest of the speakers. 
the life well lived is not the life that moves quickest from point A to point B, no matter what your guidance counselor tells you. <laughs> right? The life that is well lived is a life that can appreciate the pathway that it's on, that is adequately prepared in order to change a pathway. It appreciates the fact that the change itself can often be painful. It can mean breaking away from certain preconceived notions. It may even appreciate that any path that, you are that you're receiving, that you see in front of you, is not large enough, that you need to bushwhack. You are going to need to walk through that forest to get to that cliff. And this is why I like this image of the career landscape. The career landscape allows you to have a deep sense of yourself and what you're about, and it puts into perspective that any career you have is only one tool for you coming in to be the person that you want to become. And it also means that with every time you change your path, and with every time you leave a pathway to explore a new region, you are making that landscape more accessible for those who follow you. So, appreciate those moments of transition and realize they are a call for you to look at a different part of your landscape. Thank you.